respected audience assalamu alaikum i am professor shamsud zaman professor of pathology i welcome all in today's third lecture on systemic pathology today day one of diseases of stomach today's topic is peptic ulcer day one of diseases of stomach today's topic is peptic ulcer first going to discuss about peptic ulcer we have to recapitulate what is ulcer ulcer is the discontinuation of surface epithelium due to sloughing out of inflammatory necrotic tissue dear audience if this is the surface epithelium of the skin if we cut it with a blade or knife it is not ulcer although there is discontinuity of the surface epithelium following cutting it is not ulcer it is cut injury if there is inflammation here following inflammation if there is necrosis and if there is sloughing out of this necrotic tissue there will be discontinuity of the surface epithelium and this is known as ulcer so ulcer is the discontinuity of surface epithelium due to sloughing out of inflammatory necrotic tissue now come to peptic ulcer what do we mean by peptic ulcer chronic usually solitary lesion at any part of gi tract chronic usually solitary lesion at any part of gastrointestinal tract exposed to acid pepsin digestion is known as peptic ulcer there are means peptic ulcer is a chronic lesion it is usually solitary lesion it may occur at any part of gi tract exposed to acid pepsin digestion suppose this is esophagus this is the stomach This is duodenum, and this is the GI tract. So, any chronic lesion at any part of the GI tract exposed to acid pepsin digestion is known as peptic ulcer. Here it is. There are many ulcers that occur in the GI tract. Among these ulcer, the ulcer which is due to acid pepsin digestion. is known as peptic ulcer the ulcers other than the acid peptic digestion in the gi tract is not peptic ulcer so the lesion at any part of the gi tract exposed to acid pepsin digestion is known as peptic ulcer now come to what are the different signs of peptic ulcer First part of duodenum and from of the stomach. Gastro-enterostomy stroma. 
butanum jejunum and helium simultaneously simultaneously there is peptical chain in butanum jejunum and helium it usually occurs in jollinger ellison syndrome as in jollinger ellison syndrome it may occur in meckel's diverticulum if the meckel's diverticulum contains ectopic gastric mucosa Meckel's diverticulum is present 
but there is no gastric mucosa there will be no peptic ulcer if mechanism diabetic lung present and if there is ectopic gastric mucosa in the mechanism diabetic lung there will be peptic ulcer respected audience now come to gastric ulcer Gastric ulcer is the peptic ulcer in the stomach. Peptic ulcer in the stomach is the gastric ulcer. Now come to pathogenesis of gastric ulcer. Again, we recapitulate. It is chronic solid relation at any part of GI tract exposed to aggressive action of acid pepsin digestion. If there is local defect in the stomach. Due to acid pepsin digestion, this is known as gastric ulcer. Come to pathogenesis of gastric ulcer. Dear audience, we know no acid, no ulcer. No hydrochloric acid, no ulcer. We know. No acid, no ulcer. What it means? If gastrointestinal mucosa is not exposed to hydrochloric acid, there will be no peptic ulcer. Here it is. Gastric ulcer is associated with normal chlorhydria, hypochlorhydria. Or hyperchlorhydria, but gastric ulcer or peptic ulcer is not associated with achlorhydria. It means no acid, no ulcer. Peptic ulcer is associated with. Or increased, but there is acidity. As there is acidity, it is associated with peptic ulcer. But peptic ulcer is not associated with is not associated with acidity. Acidity means. There is no gastric acidity. If there is no gastric acidity, there will be no peptic ulcer. So no acid, no ulcer. Dear audience, imbalance between the aggressive action of acid pepsin and defense of gastrointestinal mucosa is associated with peptic ulcer. Is associated with gastric ulcer. between 
aggressive action of acid pepsin and defense of gastrointestinal mucosa is associated with peptic ulcer is associated with peptic ulcer that is associated with gastric ulcer dear friends now come to defense of gastrointestinal mucosa defense of gastrointestinal mucosa suppose this is a stomach junction between the lining epithelium tight junction tight junction between lining epithelium dear audience if this is the stomach wall and if this is the lining this is the tight junction between the epithelium this tight junction between the epithelium is associated with the defense of gastric mucosa if anybody suffers from gastritis due to inflammation in the gastric mucosa there will be decreased mucosal defense prolonged exposure to unbuffered aspirin prolonged exposure to unbuffered aspirin this unbuffered aspirin irritates on the gastric mucosa and causes decreased gastrointestinal mucosal defense decreased 
ಇಬ್ಬರು ಸೆಲ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟುಮಾಕ್ ಆಲ್ಕೋಹಲಿಸಮ್ ಆಲ್ಕೋಹಲಿಸಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೀಸ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಟುಬ್ಯಾಕೋ ಅಬ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೀಸ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಮ್ಯೂಕೋಸ ಇನ್ 
equivalence between aggressive action of acid pepsin and leucosalpins leucosalpins so decreased leucosal defense is associated with the balance between aggressive action of acid pepsin and leucosal defense so thereby st ulcer suffers from gastric ulcer what will be the morphology of gastric ulcer now come to morphology of gastric ulcer examination reveals round to oval ulcer ulcer is usually situated along the lesser curvature ulcer usually along the lesser curvature Ulcer usually single in number. The size of ulcer usually less than four centimeter diameter. Usually less than four centimeter diameter. The margin of ulcer is punched out, punched out shape. the base of ulcer is clean why the base or floor of ulcer is clean it is due to gastric hydrochloric acid so these are the characteristics of ulcer on gross examination so ulcer is usually single it is usually situated along the lesser curvature size is usually less than 4 cm and the margin is very sharp and looks like pumps out and the floor is clean due to hydrochloric acid Dear audience, now come to histopathology of gastric ulcer. Histopathology reveals four distinct zones. Histopathology reveals four distinct zones. From inside to outside, the zones are zone of necrosis, zone of 
inflammation zone of granulation tissue and zone of scab zone of necrosis zone of inflammation zone of granulation tissue zone of scab if we see the ulcer from inside to outside the other end, suppose this is the histopathology. First, we will get zone of necrosis. Then, we will get zone of inflammation. There will be a pre-inflammatory cell inflammation. Complications of gastric ulcer. Immediate complications. Immediate complications like bleeding from ulcer. If ulcer is here and if this ulcer bleeds, the bleeding in the form of hematemesis, in the form of melina. So, in the form of hematemesis or in the form of melina. So, bleeding in the form of hematemesis. in the form of melina. There may be perforation. Another complication of gastric ulcer is perforation. There will be perforation. These are the immediate complications. Now come to late complications. Late complications may be Gastric outlet obstruction. Gastric outlet obstruction. There may be teapot deformity. There may be our glass contracture. there may be gastric carcinoma. So, immediate complication of bleeding in the form of hematopathies and the form of melina, perforation, late complication, gastric outlet obstruction, 
tripod deformity, hourglass contracture, and gastric carcinoma. Here it is. If this is the esophagus and this is the stomach, like this. If there is ulcer is here and it is chronic one, you know chronic ulceration is associated with chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation is associated with fibrosis and due to fibrosis there will be contraction and due to contraction there will be chance of development of gastric outlet obstruction so as it is chronic inflammation in the chronic ulcer it is associated with fibrosis due to fibrosis there will be contraction and this contraction is associated with gastric outlet obstruction now come to T pot deformity Here it is, suppose this is esophagus, this is the stomach, and this is the ulceration here. You know, gastric ulcer is chronic one, it is associated with fibrosis due to chronic inflammation. As there is fibrosis, there will be contraction. Following contraction, the stomach looks like this. between benign gastric ulcer and malignant gastric ulcer. Clean and 
पंक्स आउट ग्रेन्स बट द मार्जिन ऑफ मेलिग्नल सेल इज इरेगुलर बट द मार्जिन ऑफ मेलिग्नल सेल इज इरेगुलर वाइ इरेगुलर अल्सर मार्जिन इन मेलिग्नल सेल Neurodens, you know, malignant cells proliferate rapidly. Due to rapid proliferation of malignant cells, the margin of ulcer is irregular. Page of ulcer. Page of ulcer in case of benign gastric ulcer is clean. It is clean due to hydrochloric acid. But the base of malignant ulcer is dirty. Why dirty base of malignant ulcer? Dear friends, you know carcinoma is associated with necrosis. As there is necrosis in case of malignant ulcer, there will be dirty base of the ulcer. Histopathology. Here is Histopathology reveals four distinct zones in benign ulcer: zone of necrosis, zone of inflammation, zone of nutrition tissue, and zone of scar. Four distinct zones. But malignant ulcer histopathologically reveals. Anaplastic cells in the form of adenocarcinoma. Anaplastic cells in the form of adenocarcinoma. Anaplastic cells in the form of adenocarcinoma. So these are the differences between benign gastric ulcer and malignant gastric ulcer. Is usually malignant. Old is. Site usually along the cervical and the greater cervical. Site usually less than four centimeter, more than four centimeter. Number of ulcer usually solitary but multiple in malignant one. Margin clean and punctured out appearance. Irregular margin in malignant ulcer. Base of ulcer clean but dirty base in malignant ulcer. Histopathology reveals four distinct zones in benign ulcer. But anaplastic cells is revealed in malignant ulcer in the form of adenocarcinoma. Dear audience, I have told you today about the peptic ulcer. I have told you peptic ulcer is the chronic, usually solid lesion at any part of GI tract exposed to acid pepsin digestion. I have told you no acid, no ulcer. I have told you what are the different sites of peptic ulcer. First part of duodenum, gastric entrum. Lower end of esophagus, in palate esophagus, gastroenterostomy, stoma, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. In case of Jolinger's Ellison syndrome, Meckel's diverticulum containing gastric mucosa as ectopic tissue. I have told you Jolinger's Ellison syndrome composed of gastric hypersecretion, peptic ulcer diseases, and Tumors in the islets of pancreas that secretes gastrin. The tumor is known as gastrinoma. I have told you pathogenesis of gastric ulcer. Imbalance between the defense of gastrointestinal mucosa and aggressive action of acid pepsin. I have told you the defense of gastrointestinal mucosa is maintained by secretion of mucin. Maintained by tight junction of the lining epithelium, maintained by mucosal vascularity, and this defense may be decreased following gastritis, prolonged use of unpreferred gastrin, alcoholism, tobacco abuse, Campylobacter pylori infection, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use. Campylobacter pylori splits urea of the gastric secretion and production of hydrogen ion. This hydrogen ion increases gastric acidity. 
periodics, I have told you the morphology of the gastric ulcer, cross examination and histopathological contents, and I have told you what are the complications of gastric ulcer. Lastly, I have told you differences between benign and malignant gastric ulcers. Today, up to this, thanks all.